G'day, this is BLXAD and welcome to Gene Forge 5. So this is my second time recording this. First time I had a resolution of about this much of the screen for the entire video. So let's repeat it again for your pleasure. So um, it's actually pretty good recording. I had uh, some close fights coming up and it was very nearly lost a few times. So I'll be a little more careful this time and we'll see how that goes. I do apologise if my commentary is a little bit average today as well. I've been awake for about 26 hours. I was on call with the ambulance all night. So, we'll see how that goes. <coughs> as the door behind you slides shut, you evaluate the situation. There are four alcoves in this chamber, each containing a claw bug, only partially completed. The act of creation seems to have been interrupted. The creatures are insubstantial. They stand motionless on the platforms. Then, power begins to flow through one of the conduits on the ground. It enters the claw bug in the northeast alcove. The creature instantly begins to look more real. The claws begin to move. Soon the creature will be complete. Oh well, it seems easy enough. We just... wail on them before they become whole. Let's attack this one over here while the others are dazed. Well, it probably makes sense to take that one out, but we'll, we'll see how this goes anyway. Try a different tack from last time. focus on this one. <clears throat> okay, that's open. It's going to come out and attack me very shortly. Ah, uh, didn't work. Alrighty. One active claw bug. And problem solved. Got me some nimble sandals. That'll give me some extra dexterity, which will help with any missile weapons I end up using, like spells and whatnot. Carnelian gloves, some of my favourites. One battle magic, that's not a particularly powerful bonus, but I really like the Cunningland Gloves. They tend to stick with me for a while in most builds I use. Alrighty. I think we're about as ready as we're going to get the boss fight. It's 
some essence back up. And head on in. Hopefully this go this will go better than last time. You inspect the control center for this area of the foundry. It's a very large hall, probably used for meetings. Right now the only creature here is the servant mind that keeps things running. Then you see the glowing mist that surrounds the servant mind and you realize where the presence has landed. This is worrying. Servant minds are expected to channel a lot of power. This means that when they go rogue, they can be very dangerous. The mind is twitching and flailing in its tray, trying to regain control of itself. The mind looks at you and says in a raspy voice, Intruder, please destroy me. Then the presence takes partial control of the creature. In an instant, it surrounds itself with a shield of energy. Creations begin to take form on the platforms to the north. Alrighty, shield of energy. I reckon I can't do any damage to it. So I'll focus on taking all of these out for now. A battle of attrition. Speed spores and war blessing. The servant mind's twitching becomes more intense. The creature is strong enough to keep the presence from taking full control, but this is very painful for it. It says, Trying, trying to break free will not be rogue. The presence takes full control again. Another swarm of creations appears on the northern platforms. Okay. So the way speed spores work in this game, as, I f as far as I know anyway, different to the previous games, they give me a percentage chance of not using up all my AP when I attack. And that lets me have a second attack. So I always have 8 AP under normal circumstances, and that time I only used up 5, so I've actually got another attack. But that's only a relatively small chance, I believe. The servant mind lets out a long, agonised screech. No, no, no! It looks very pale, its eyes glaze over. It regains control for a moment, the shield around it fades, then the presence takes control only to find out that the mind has lost much of its power. Its essence is drained, the shield is gone. It still has some strength left though, enough to summon another swarm of bugs. Alrighty, shield down. Start wailing on the monster in a couple of seconds. Wipe out these buggies. Focus down here. Hmm, this is going to be troublesome. So all the damage it was doing and not being able to heal my party properly is what nearly wiped me out last time. But if I spread out, maybe I won't take as much damage. Okay, maybe not. Oh, I'll just keep pounding on it and hope for the best here. Cursing all my people. I'm going to try to get a war blessing back up again. 
I think that ups my accuracy, gives me a bit more damage. Ooh, Mekin's gonna die shortly. Yeah, this is going much better than last time. I was only down to two Fiora before. Barely made it out. Uh, may not make it out actually, this is not with all of them. Get you right back. Still going to be tight. But getting those speed spawns on early made the huge difference. Ah, oh, no. That was stupid. Alrighty. Let's see if I can keep Mechan alive. I actually didn't want you to come down. Oh, it's getting close. And one down. Who was that? We've got Alhoun, we've got Sajuk, and we've got Bormak. So goodbye, Chesrook. Oh well, he can be remade. We shall remake him. If I survive... Uh, it's going to be tight. I'm going to need more essence. I reckon Mechan might be my best bet here. So buff him up. Or her up. Oh, come on! So the issue I've got here is the low intelligence of my creations gives me pretty weak control over them. And so the mental attacks just force it to run away. Oh well, I should be able to beat it one on one. It's nearly dead. And as far as I'm aware, I'm immune to those kind of mental attacks. Done. Right at the end. At last, you have heavily damaged the servant mind presence can no longer use its body as it did before. It begins to flee, a long wisp emerging from the pale body. The servant mind quietly says, Am free, thank you. Am in control. Am loyal, can end. Invader dies with me. It closes its eyes and wills itself to die before the presence can completely escape. As before, part of its form is chopped off trapped in the body of the servant mind. The rest of it, looking fainter than before, flows through the east wall. You have banished the presence from another region. Barely, I might add. It was quite a... quite a close battle. Thorny chitin. More armor, damage shield, acid resistance. I don't think need to worry about hit chance so much. I reckon that's better than what I've got here. And Chaotics, I have no idea what Chaotic Spores do. Never seen them before. They're new to this game. So, I guess we'll find out sometime in the future if I remember to use them. I wonder if this will allow me to unlock. 
maybe not. I've got a lot of choice here, I'm going to need to go back. Need to go back and grab more essence and, and refill everything. Before I go oh, artilla. Yeah, so before we can continue on, I'm going to have to get my essence refilled. And I've been told there are other missions I've missed in my haste to keep exploring. I've not covered all the early areas. So I'll go through here and we'll get back to them soon. Level up. So as I said last episode, I'm going to be heading up and focusing on mechanics for the time being. I'll probably get that to at least 10 early on and probably leadership I don't know, eight or nine. And uh, then I'll start focusing on battle. Who's Cruncher? Oh, okay. Must be from the soldiers. Yes, yeah, so I'll focus on uh, my non -combat, combat skills for a while before I head off and explore further into the combat tree, skill tree. So, first of all, let's create who who survived. Alhoun survived, so I'm going to need to create Bormac. I'm going to need to create Chessrook. And I'm going to need to create Sajuk. And once again, if anyone would like a creation added to the, the pool, add, add your name to the creation pool, I will be sure to put you on the list. Just leave a comment and let me know. Okay, so let's finish exploring off in this area. Might actually find a few things. This book is called A Brief Guide to Shaper Law. Most of it's pretty esoteric, but one early section is interesting. Shaper law is stern. The rules are many and strictly applied, and the punishments for disobeying are harsh. Shaper laws are all justified by the need to control their power. A rogue, lawless shaper could do incredible harm. Only a precious few people display the calm and control necessary to wield this power. The most fundamental rule is that nobody outside their sect can learn about shaping. Any outsider, as non-shapers are called, who tries to learn about or practice this craft is executed. This rule is practiced without exception. All creations must obey the shapers totally. Any creation who disobeys is called rogue and destroyed. Some creation types, like drakes, are barred. They are always considered to be rogue and destroyed on sight. Shaper law is just. They care for their creations. They have rules restricting how creations can be treated. Gratuitous, <coughs> gratuitous cruelty is forbidden, as is pitting creations against each other in an arena setting. A little bit of propaganda there, keep us going. Uh, Not particularly interested in that. Mind Shimp. There is a moist, puffy creature reclining in the stone tray. It is a servant mind, the most intelligent sort of creation the actual shapers are allowed to make. The only way they were able to trust the creation with full intelligence was to also make it immobile. Servant minds can't walk. They require serviles to feed them and tend to their needs. When this mind sees you, it says in a flat, deep voice, I am mine shimp. Approach and state your business in Minala. I will evaluate and guide as needed. Alrighty, what do you do? Servant mind says in its even monotone, a prepared statement. 
I evaluate travellers entering and leaving Minala. I record and recall their identity and purpose. I evaluate creations brought to the foundry to ensure they are legal, properly controlled and free of disease. I guide young, young prospectives to the trial. What's trial? Prospective shapers may go to the testing halls to prove their worth. Victory has great rewards. You are not a pros prospective shaper. I cannot tell you more about this. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, it's just propaganda and stuff. Information, background. Okay, does it have any quests? Can you guide me? I'm aware that Shaper Rawal has a task for you. My guidance is that you should speak with Rawal and complete his task. <laughs> okay, that's not very helpful. I felt it. I felt the invader's presence. It tried to make me mad. My mind was too strong. I fought it off. I cannot tell you more about it. Okay, Mind Shimp is pretty useless to me. It's a problem with too many creations. The pathfinding in this game is this side of terrible. But I will keep exploring. There's a few areas I haven't properly paid attention to yet down here. Captain Valenta. There is a soldier sitting behind this desk. Human, like all full soldiers. Captain's insignia, an outsider, not a full shaper. She looks cold and tired. When you approach, she straightens up and looks interested. Shaper Rawal was in here. Told me about you, personally. You must be interesting. I am Captain Valenta. Formerly fighting in the Meritev, now commander of the garrison here. I've been ordered to give you information once Rowell has seen you. Where were you fighting before you? She winces at the memory. Down in the Meritev, the next province to the south, at the base of the mountains. Getting out of there was a relief. I got transferred up here. It's cold, but I don't have my soldiers dying to the unbound every day. Here it's better now, but still, I don't know what the unbound are. One of the Brellian's more interesting creations. Huge lizards charged with essence, pure power, and completely out of control. The Dracons in charge of the Rebellion make them and send them stampeding into our lands. They go insane and destroy everything they can find. By the time the Shapers bring them down, she shakes her head. And a week later, more come. Things are better in the Meritev. So I hear, Astoria's will broke. She wants peace with the Rebellion. They are rewarding her with fewer attacks. She smiles wryly. It's all part of the training process. Who's Astoria? Your mind really has gone, hasn't it? Astoria rules the Meritev. She's an agent, and one of the seven. A full member of the Shaper Council. And the first member of the Council who broke under the strain. Or so I hear. Uh, can I get supplies? A quartermaster, okay. Can you help me? No, you can help me. Raoul told me to use you. If you can do some tasks for me, I can reward you. I understand that you'll be roaming the core looking for whatever has been disturbing the creations. There is a rogue out there, a Fiora, green tint. It's been modified extensively. It wounded two of my soldiers, almost ate one of them. I want it destroyed before some other shaper orders me to capture it alive. How's it modified? I don't know how the shape I don't know the shape of terms for what they did. All I know is it can shoot flames everywhere. Also left it very erratic. Whatever caused all the creations to go mad drove it completely crazy. Where should I look for it? In the eastern core. Um, I think I beat something like that, didn't I? I did. Killed that Fiora for you. That is a relief. I expect orders to come through asking us to grab it alive any day now. A shaper will be angry, but my soldiers will stay alive. She gives you a pouch of silver coins. I have one more thing you can do. Do it, and I can give you something even nicer. Experience is nice. Coins are pretty good. Uh, what else can I do? One of my soldiers was lost in the Western Core, cut off from his patrol by a swarm of worms. His name is Carl. He's probably dead. He's good, but there's a lot of rogues in there. Find him, or his body. Look at that, I already found Carl. You should have probably spoken to him when he got back. 
You tell the captain what happened, she nods. He made it back, scratched, beaten up, burned with acid, but alive. We have you to thank for that. You've earned this reward. She presents you with a ring and a pair of boots. She also shakes your hand. Shielding band, okay. And they're valueless to me. Essence pod is useful though. Well, I still haven't found a shop. Um, honestly, I have no idea where I can sell stuff. Maybe up here. Probably should have explored around a bit when I first came here, but I don't know, I was excited to get into the game. There we go, look at that. Barcott looks like a merchant. There is a small shop in this chamber. The walls and floors have been scarred and cracked by an explosion, probably a year or two ago. Then a tinker moved in. The merchant is an old man. His skin shows the signs of decades exposed to the sun and elements. His tan is fading now in the cold and shadow of the white spires. A customer. A customer. <clears throat> I am Barcott. I still have some supplies left, I am glad to say. Most were lost, but I still have a few things. Come in and out of the cold and take a look. I want to sell you something before I buy anything. A little bit of money, bit of money, 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 money. I believe if it's the same as previous games, you can actually combine these into something. So I'm going to hold on to that for now. Might make a little bit more money. Uh, I'm going to hold on to that too. That, don't need that, don't need that. Thorns I can't sell, okay. What does he sell? A few things, but I'll hold on to what I've got for now so that the goods were lost. They were in my workshop outside Manala, in the promenade to the east. That was before the creations went rogue. Seems like a long time ago. Now my workshop has thuds in it. I hear that you're going to be doing some hunting. If you can kick the creatures out, I would pay you. Tell me about that workshop. It was where I stored and repaired my goods, part of the time. I was also storing and caring for new sorts of plants for the shapers. I know a lot about plants. Grew up on a farm, learned a lot more in my travels. Now those thuds are eating all my samples, probably making their heads all crazy, destroying all of my work. Yeah, I've already done that. I've lived a long life and I've had very little good fortune. You have truly surprised an old man. Wait here. He leaves the shop. You stand near the brazier and wait for him to return. Eventually he comes back with a large pack. He removes a wand and hands it to you. That is fair pay, I think. Now that I have my inventory, I have more things to sell. Okay, well, let's see what else you've got to sell. Rings, curing spores. Eh, not hugely useful. Is there anything else? I, oh, yeah. That needs to be sold. Erosive field. Not a huge fan of wands. Alrighty. Do a bit of sorting. Consumables on the left, craftables on the right, useless stuff on the ground. And general selling junk in the centre. Uh, that probably would have been helpful during that boss fight. I always forget to use items. But, I found something to sell, somewhere to sell finally. That's a big help. Uh, 
Uh, nothing particularly useful here. No, that was a waste of a living tool. Alrighty, I wonder if I've got enough mechanics now to open that chest that was in his workshop. Not a chest, it was a cupboard in his workshop. But I've been pretty keen to have a look at. I'm going to finish exploring here. I'm going to check out that cupboard before we move into the final area. These small clearings are probably where creations are kept while waiting to be taken to their permanent holding cells. There are several thuds clustered together at the far end of the northern area. They look very twitchy and uncomfortable. Something about their behaviour makes you very suspicious. Okay, it's going to be a battle. There you go. Bit of purification. Yeah, use up essence. I'm going to save my essence for now. Do a bit more exploring. See if there's anything else useful here. Shutting off the power does. You meet the blacksmith and craftswoman to the Shaper outpost. This is no ordinary iron work worker, making horseshoes and fixing plows. The tools needed to care for and house creations are much more difficult to work with. She sets down a small hammer and steps away from the mine housing she was repairing. Ah, you're, one, you're the one Rowell was interested in. Anyone who gains the notice of the Shapers must be worth my time. I am Lazaria, and this is my workshop. If you are indeed helping to calm the rogues, I have a problem that requires assistance. Okay. I'm afraid so, she points at the east door. The shapers trust me to take volatile creations and put them in their casings. Complete mines, in other words. However, when all of the creations began to go mad, whatever afflicted them touched the mines too. They are all active. I don't know how to disarm them. I thought that since you are working to tame unruly creations, you might be able to help me. Alrighty, I can help. Thank you. Having these creatures in my workshop waiting to explode and destroying all of my tools is a great worry to me. The first room has the mines. The second room has a pair of field pylons. If you can reach the pylons and cut their power, my workshop will be safe. Alrighty. Can I buy something from you? Mm. Nothing I want. Okay, it's time to put that mechanic skill to good use. This workshop is for the creation of mines. Highly delicate and volatile creations are placed in specially made shells. Then, they are placed anywhere the shapers want to defend from rebel assaults. When triggered, the creations in the shells explode. They aren't a species that would do well out in the wild. <laughs> However, the madness has recently affected the other creations has maddened the mines too. They pulse angrily, waiting to be set off unless someone can disarm them. Alrighty, that shouldn't be too difficult. And they will kill me. This workshop contains another of the Shaper's bizarre and dangerous creations. A pair of pylons rest on the two shaping platforms. The essence charge creations within wait for you to get close, then they can fulfill their life's purpose, discharging waves of devastating energy. It looks like the spore box used to control them is on the western alcove. If you can reach it without getting too close to the pylons, you might be able to deactivate them. Done. Get some crystals and a few pods and things. Alrighty, that was easy enough. This is all the tutorial stuff I skipped over earlier. But, gives me experience. Lazaria looks relieved. Well, one of the rumours was true. You do know how to deal with crazed creations. Let me give you something as thanks for your help. 
She'll have more than a chitin and a knife to protect you. She gives you a short sword and a shield for you. Alrighty, well, I reckon I'm going to call this here today. I'm going to run west and see if I can, sorry, run east and see if I can open, <clears throat> I'm going to run east and see if I can open that cupboard in the other workshop where the fads were. Otherwise, I will, if that doesn't work, I'll head up and start recording in the next area. Thanks for coming in.